previously. I might as well just say it over the radio now. I just yeeted a banana up onto his roof. Bryce is going to get himself into trouble here shortly. You fucking little cunt. You fucking little... Sh I got rid of the banana, but the bad voodoo is still on this boat. I've never seen the hockeys this bad. They are my number one enemy, just above Bryce. It's lobster season in the waters of Tasmania's rugged coast. You steamed up in front of us. I zigzag when I shoot my gear, and you started fucking sitting in front of us. What the fuck are you doing, mate? What the fuck are you doing? Three hardcore lobstermen are battling for the biggest catch and the best price. The catching is the easiest part of fishing. The hardest part is selling your lobsters. Hey, it's Bryce. How you going? I'll try and get the tanks nice and empty so we can get out 300 kilos after you. Oh, wow, that'd be awesome yeah, yeah. if you could. Now we've got the order, it's time to start catching. We got a bit of a head start on the boys, which is a bonus. I wish we could swap boats. I've cheated, and now I'm going home to unload. That's a pretty lazy 78 and a half grand check for you. Fucking thank you, mate. What's the beach price? Oh, no good news at the moment. We're currently betting that this price is going to rise. If it doesn't, I don't know what we're going to do. Fuck every pot snags. We had three snag pots this morning in a row. That's why you don't do banana shit. Catching lobsters on Tasmania's west coast is not for the faint-hearted. It's one of the wildest and most dangerous stretches of coastline in the world. Dozens of fishermen have lost their lives here, hunting for lobsters. This is typical West Coast Tasmania weather. I think it rains about 200 days a year down here, so we've been lucky the last four days. For the crew of the bold contender, the gloom and doom extends well beyond the skies. Like another octopus. Welcome to the Octopus Contender. David is pretty quiet this morning, hasn't said many words at all, which brings my mood down too. He's not his happy little self. Fuck's sake. How quick things can go fucking pear-shaped on a fucking crowbar. Normally do really well here. I'm just not going. Absolutely blank as blank. We just got bad voodoo shit on this boat. What I put it down to is a banana. It makes me so angry. You have mornings where your confidence just drops. And you just feel like everything's starting to pile on top of you. The octopus are winning. We're getting snag pots. Just everything just claws you down a little bit. Fuck, I just feel fucking stressed. It'd be nice to be Glenn now, uh, unloading over a ton of reds at $50. We're out here uh, slaving ourselves away. Hoping for 50 when we get back. Everything's just going to shit. Price is shit. The fish is shit. Everything's just shit. You don't sound very motivated today, buddy. No, I don't. Don't, don't. I just feel down in the dumps. Yeah, it's quizzy sounding. Sort of a bit depressed, to be honest, on the radio. So he was on one of the other radios, and another fisherman called him on the other radio, asking if he was all right. So there's a reason it's called fishing, not catching. It is a gamble. It just is. It takes a toll on you mentally, physically, everything. The chieftain crew is chasing brindles. I say, and their luck is no better. Oh, for fuck's sake! Today, we really need to be seeing around the 200 fish mark. I've got orders to fill, people to catch fish for. This boat holds a lot of fish, and it's time to start loading up with a lot of fish. We got one. 
Finally got one. Finally got one lobster. Fucking set all. Bryce's direct deal with a local restaurant will earn him $13,500 if he can catch the 400 brindle lobsters he needs to fill the order. How the fuck did that miss? When you come offshore, you're a bit more tide affected than you are inshore. Inshore sort of got it easy when it comes to the tide. The tide's running really hard back in. And in this area, it runs down the coast. So our floats are basically, we've only got the head float. There's two floats on our sets. One's been sucked under, and the other one's just bobbing on top. Now, the problems that brings is uh, it's incredibly hard for Lockie to grapple. It takes multiple attempts most of the time. What the fuck's that? You got it, boy. You got this one. Fuck doing that 50 times. Whew. Jelly arms after one set. Lockie's built like a prawn. He weighs 72 kilos. As Lockie's holding onto those floats once he's got it over our tipper, the tension on that line can be upwards of 150 kilos. Like, he can just fling him over. I'm feeling fucked. <laughs> like, honestly, rooted. Want to put your coat on? Yeah, I fucking might, I think. Five hours to the south, the weather is closing in too. Snotty would happily trade the wheelhouse for the bunkhouse. But there's a night shot to pull. My body nearly went into shutdown because I thought what I was going home, because that's what normally happens. But we've come back out and, yeah, I'm feeling it. The presence of his 16-year-old son, Ryan, has given Snotty an idea. And if it works out, he might be able to get the respite he's after. I'm going to give the young bloke a little bit of a crack at driving the boat, pulling pots and setting some pots his trip. I think he's uh, keen on me having to get my skipper's ticket and taking the boat for a few trips here and there, so definitely got to have a bit of practice at it. If I've got him trained up and he can do the job, block, I could jump off the boat here and go home and he could take it out. That's what I want. that will be good. It's nice and warm in here. <laughs> I've been going out fishing with Dad since I could walk, pretty much, so or even before I could walk. So it's just it's in me blood. I'm the fifth generation fisherman, and Ryan's just like pretty much the mini me, what I used to be like when I was his age. This is the sort of weather where I'm glad I'm not a deckhand anymore. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Just put me hood on and keep getting the craze out and just do me job. I've got to give Ryan opportunities to drive the boat to learn. There's only one way to learn, and that's through doing it. The last sort of 10 pots have saved us. All oh, right. Getting, like, fives and sixes and shit. Yep. Snotty will skip the rest of the shot. The next one's in Ryan's hands. At stake isn't just a $350,000 fishing vessel. It's their place on the tally board and the financial success of the trip. See how he goes finding the big ones then. It's literally all hands on deck just to get these pots aboard. I don't want Lockie to be harmed. So me going out and giving him that little hand to pull yep. his floats in, it's really important to make sure he's all right. Pull, Bross, pull! Pull, Bross! It's bloody hard to pull in. Like, both of us pulling on the line, it's still a struggle. Shots like this can get fucked. Unless we'll get like 20 a pot, they can get fucked. Well, we might from now onwards. We were doing pretty well here yesterday. That's why there's four pots here. Jinxed it. I oh, literally, I haven't even pulled one out worth measuring yet. Oh, maybe that one. No. Tiny. We're fishermen. We always want more. More's always good. More lobsters, the better. Less shots, the better. Less time at sea, the better. We always want more lobsters in our pots. If this has no lobos, we're fucked. <laughs> Leave them in the water. 
There's no loves in this. Let's fuck pack it up. Looks like a good pot. Thanks, Squiz. Thanks, Squiz. That's a bulk contender pot. The previous owner of the bulk contender, Neville, who Squiz worked for, he, uh, I was down at the wharf one day and he was putting some pots on and I made a remark about, oh, they're bloody nice pots. And he turned around and gave me one and said, you can have that. And then about, I oh, know, six months later, Squiz said, that's my pot. What's that doing on there? And I said, well, Neville gave it to me, so. Yes, but rest in peace, old Nev. You know, it's the first time back to the mole case since we set the pot. Yeah. I think one of the reasons I've been feeling a bit weird the uh, last day or so is since we come to the mole case, is it's, in, it's the place where uh, me and Tavia said goodbye to our mate and the previous owner of the bowl contender. We got a pot, put a bowl of scotch in it, um, six pack of EB, a couple of other personal things and didn't have a rope on it. I only had a, just a boy do it, a couple of private little messages and we set it in one of his favourite spots in the Mulcahy and uh, it's still there today. Um, he's the bloke what uh, taught me everything about fishing. And I think that's what's uh, the first time back. It's been eight months. And, um, yeah. <laughs> just the emotions of all that. It's probably just uh, come to take its toll on me, I think. I got my first job with Dev. He taught me to be a deckhand. I wouldn't be where I am today without him. He gave me a chance. There's not many people uh, in this industry I get a chance and weren't bred into it. I didn't have a father that was a fisherman. I just wanted to be a fisherman. And he took me under his wing and led me through it all. Oh, Nev's, Nev was just a champion bloke. I've sat down in the wheelhouse and listened to Neville talk to other fishermen on the radio, like just his knowledge of the coast and what he was like was brilliant. If he said something, I'd listen. Neville was almost like a second father. He was someone that was there through all my childhood, was always at his house causing a ruckus. Every kid, no matter how young they were, they looked up to Neville and, and, and Squizzy had that same thing. Never battled with mental health for a number of years, a long time, and eventually he just took his own life. If you've ever got uh, mental health issues, just make sure you talk to someone about it. Oh, fuck. Because uh, what you leave behind it's uh, devastating. Fishermen are known as probably one of the toughest jobs in the world, but we're human. I was just talking about it, I started fucking crying flat out. <laughs> you got to lean on your mates, your family. Ask for that help and just speak, speak up. Tide's definitely not our friend today. I can't wait for this shot to be over. That pot's an easy 60 plus kilo, 70 kilo. <laughs> it's a fucking heavy pot. That pot weighs as much as you. That's like 70 kilo. Fuck yeah. Good job, Twig boy. Thanks, fuckwit. I'm a third generation lobster fisherman. My grandfather was. My, my father followed his footsteps, and Dad knew that's what he wanted to be when he was in high school. The moment I left school, I didn't want anything to do with it. So uh, it's been a few too many years probably for me to come around. Um, I'm a late starter, but I've got, I've got a lot of catching up to do. I've only been in this industry for a few years, really. As a kid, I was never really paying attention. You know, I, uh, I was driving the boat when I was only little. You know, Dad was on deck doing things, and he'd let me hold some pots and drive the boat around the gear, but that's not... You know, you, that's fun years. 
The two children running a 60 ton, 17 and a half metre, 300 odd horsepower motored boat, commercially fishing on the west coast. Bulk contenders like a bunch of monkeys on that boat. Bloody Taves is the silverback. He rules the roost on that boat. And Squizzy's one of them little baboons with a red bum bum that just runs around everywhere squawking. Tie it on the right fucking way. Fucking, that's why I go, man. That's back to front for me. Look at this. Cock handed. Who unties them? Point taken. Look, Tave is a straight shooter. He's probably one of a kind. Just take me fucking 30 seconds longer to tie him on. Take me two minutes longer to fucking untie the cunts. He always pulls me back into reality, that's for sure. And he says it in his own words. He's old school. He's hard to get out of bed, but he just works like a trojan. He doesn't complain. He does complain in his way. It gives you a dirty look and all that stuff, but he just still does it. He's old school, mate, and they don't make them like that anymore. How many more are you pulling? Uh, I see two. I can definitely see two. Oh, Taves, I fucking can't see. I'll measure them fish when I get the anchor. Ended up pulling 40 pots for 108, so better than yesterday. We've we'll improved. Didn't end up pulling all the pots because I left them ones inshore just to protect that zone, so we ended up keeping it. A lot of boats around. There's five in the anchorage here tonight at Mile K. We ended up with 181 to the day shot, so it wasn't quite what I was after, but it's close enough. Only 20 off the goal of 200, so I'll accept that. Bryce bagged 72 more than Squizzy, but he still trails him overall. Snoddy's 129 cements his place at the top of the tally board. It was first, first time back to the old K since uh, we set uh, Neville's pot. And, um, yeah, as you can see, I uh, it took its toll on me today, like, just mentally. Um, yeah, the stress sort of builds up and emotions uh, take over. I'm not... Um, I'm not ashamed to show it. Yeah! Come on! Day six! Woohoo! My mood for the day is dictated by how many lobsters we catch. If we have a bad shot, I'm in a shitty mood all day. And I've had that a few times this trip. Because at the end of the day, we've got massive running costs. And if we're not catching, we're not earning. First time back to the old K. Neville's favourite fishing spot. I'm going to forget all the bullshit. I'm just going to concentrate fully on fishing today, and I'm going to enjoy it. Just a lot of thoughts and memories going through my head. Like he's, he's there somewhere. Yeah, baby. My mood's still good today so far. Once we finish our quota, we are done for the year. In order to catch lobsters in Tasmania, fishermen have to buy or lease quota. That quota gives them the right to catch up to 20 tonnes of lobsters each season. The quicker we catch our quota for the year, the more time we spend at home with our family. And the less costs we occur for that season. And that can lead to more profit. We did it last season in 55 days, so, I mean, that's, that's great fishing. I'm rubbing me wood. Yeah, baby. Come on. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be my day. Oh. It's gonna be my day. Nine. Finally got a few girls. Nine. <laughs> Nine red ones. Yeah, baby. We're going pretty good this morning. Um, hopefully they stay like this, and we should end up with 100, 150 for the morning. Pretty good. Yeah, happy boss, happy life. <laughs> I don't have a wife, so I can't say happy wife, happy life. We really want to hitting the milestone of a thousand fish. It's sort of like you're nearly there for the trip. The chieftain is currently sitting on 912 lobsters. If Bryce has dropped his pots in the right spots he should reach his milestone this morning. Red fish flying everywhere. If I talk about it, they'll stop coming up. 
my internal excitement's bubbling, but if I show it, blank box. Is there any 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. Got four left for the first half this morning. And I'm not saying anything, but it's looking all right. I don't want to look at the bins, but there happen to be two bins full of lobster. And we've still got four pots to pull. Now I'm going to go jinx myself, but today's goal is 100. Anything more than 100. So now I've spoken, that's a blank pot. Two sharks in it. So maybe I believe in a bit of karma. Oh, look out, fucking lobsters. Yeah. I talked about the pot, and the next minute it was fucking blank with two sharks. And then I didn't talk about the pot. And now look, you believe in jinxes, Lockie? Not superstitions, isn't that right? Yeah, mate. What's the go with when I come out? We're having a good day, and I come out with my phone, what happens? The pot comes up blank. You say, oh, get ready, there's going to be apes in this pot. The pot comes up blank. You pull your phone out, and then the pot comes up blank. You say, oh, this is going to be a good one, it's in a good hole. Comes up blank. Every time. Just stop talking. Just stop talking. Less talking, more working. When it comes to superstitions, especially fruit superstitions, I don't believe in it. Jinxes might be on a different level. They're not banana level, they're, they're, they're just different. Blankety blank. Christ must have spoken about it. Must have thought about it. We've scratched up a few. We can't complain. The night shot brings Bryce's total over that psychological barrier of 1,000. And he's nipping at the bold contender's heels. The Greenhorn has decided to take a leaf out of Squizzy's book. He's going to feed him some inflated numbers. Is that you out wide? I've got to try and catch up to you, mate. Well, we're on 1,200 total, so you have fun with that. It's all peace, love and friendship, mate. If you call it that. I'd let you kiss me toes. You can kiss my ass. That's too far to bend down, mate. You're a short man. Give me a hint. You want to shave it first. I think I just regurgitated all my coffee. Yeah, Roger. We need some coffee. If you've got any spare, we've run out. It's the wild west coast of Tasmania. There's no roads, no supermarkets, there's nothing. You run out of stuff, you don't get it till you head back to port. I've got a shit ton. I've actually got one of, I bought one of them massive bloody, like, $30 fucking glass jars, so... Um, if we can have a peace treaty, like, uh, Christmas Day, World War One, or whatever it was, mate, yeah, I'll, I'll pass you some coffee. You just tell me where your closest pot to me is when you shoot it today, and I'll go over to it, I'll attach a bag to the float with some coffee, and we'll, we'll keep it halfway. We'll call it the middle grounds, and we'll just stay away. Bryce won't bring us the coffee because he's a chicken. He just does more faces, and he's just running like a chicken. I don't think Squizzy even drinks coffee. You know, he catches enough lobsters to keep his heart rate up, so he'll be fine. He'll, I don't, I don't know. Something sus. Something sus is going on here. When it comes to the egg war, Lockie and I have a bit of a disadvantage. Squizzy's a pretty good cricket player. Tabor is just a big, fit bloke that can throw an egg. I reckon most of the eggs he throws may actually break mid-air due to the pressure of flying through the air so fast. It's an expensive paint job, and it's a nice paint job, and I don't need broken eggs and possible scratches all over it, but that's what happens when you play games with other adult children. There's consequences to be had, and we've earned consequences. You happy to measure him in? Not really. Why is that? But if there's any close ones, just bring them back and I'll measure them if you're worried. Right. You've I've only found one rat out of your whole fucking thing, so oh, I'm fairly sure there is one in there. It's not real. I'll just bring that one back to it. Yeah. Just ram her up in. You just fuck you know what you're doing, I trust you. Snotty Skipper School is open for business. And son Ryan's first class is measuring lobsters. I'd trust him measuring them straight into the well now. No worries at all. If the cops come along, I've got complete faith that they're all measures. Just don't talk to him while he's doing that, because it's easy to lose count. On every boat, the lobsters are measured twice. Firstly, out of the pot, and secondly, into the well. 
the fines for being caught with undersized fish could easily wipe out the trip's profit. If we come in unloaded and the cops went for all our fish and found five or six undersized crayfish, it's nearly like you've murdered someone in the fines. Like, it's ridiculous. It's probably like a 10 grand fine, then you lose points off your entitlement. And it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, you can't afford to muck up. Everything's got to be bloody ridgy dig and spot on. Number 10, touching the wood. The shot looks pretty good at the moment. We've pulled 19 pots, and there's been five pots with over 10. Rubbing the wood, I don't want to jinx us, but let's keep it going. Let's finish off strong. down. We got 201 for our night shot. It's our best night shot for the trip. I'm stoked. I'm stoked, baby. All red, too. Woohoo! Squizzy's bumper haul may have come at just the right time. I think the price is going to go up because the weather's going to turn bad and there's not that many boats out. So I'm thinking now let's just put as many lobsters in the tank as we can. It doesn't matter if they're brindles. I'm going to take the gamble, the price goes up on the brindles. The current brindle price is undesirably low, at $40 per kilo. It's a huge punt for the bold contender. You're better off to get back to Margate, unload some brindles at $50 if you can get that, and then get paid for them, then get to the wharf going, geez, I wish I, I, wish I had that shot on the brindles. So the fishing's not bad. We're just working our way through this, this area we haven't been before. As you move along the coast, I get less and less familiar with it. Still comfortable, but less familiar. It's not like I was mentored my entire life before I became a fisherman. It's a bit harder when you've got not really too much idea as to what happens, but trying not to call Dad every five minutes and ask questions. You do need to learn a little bit yourself here and there. I can learn a lot from my father, but at the same time, the guys I'm fishing next to are the ones that are here now, and they're the ones that can give me the information here now as well. I don't know what's going to happen with the new generation of fishermen coming on, really. I've learnt that much stuff over just listening to the radio, listening to them old blokes talk, like, their stories and experiences. You just, you can't buy that stuff. We've got the phone service around there now, like, people just don't talk on the radio. Yo! How you going, mate? It's Bryce from the coffee company. I need some of that. It's going to come at a small cost. Yeah, what's that? I need some information. Yeah, what? Well, can your day shoot successfully long point up, or is it better to go down towards Green Island for reds? No, uh, it'd be worth going for long point up. You do all right normally? Yeah, OK. I, I think if you pull back all the layers of Bryce, he does maybe look up to me a bit and uh, could he always ask for advice, which I don't mind and I'll always share it with him, you know, when I can. I gotta learn, hopefully not the hard way, like, you know, I, I know spots where I shouldn't be, just because, like, listening to the radio, someone says, oh, it's breaking over here in six metres, you go, don't go anywhere near over there because it'll break, you know, you just, that's how dangerous it is, like, you don't really get m many second chances. What are we doing tomorrow? I think uh, I'll be going south tomorrow looking at the weather. You're going south, are you? Tomorrow. I was going to stay here till Tuesday. I've been on this boat in some serious weather. I know what it can do. Even if the weather's shit, it's a big boat. It's a big locky. He can handle it. I can handle it. Might not be fun to be in, but if we're catching the numbers we need, I'll accept it. The west coast of Tasmania in strong, bad westerly winds is an arsehole of a place. Just don't want to be there. You imagine the worst place you've ever been to in the world? 
and that's worse. I want to get out of here. If I was Bryce, I'd be following me. He doesn't have 30 years' experience like I do, or Glenn's got 30 years' experience plus 50 years from his old man. Why take the risk? Hello? Hey, mate, how you going? Can you lend us 20 grand? I heard you unloaded yesterday or the day before, 50 bucks. Just 20 k, mate. <laughs> I've got for it. I want interest free. It don't take long for news to get out, does it? No, no, and I'm good for the 20. I'll fix you up uh, when our, uh, everything get, gets better. <laughs> I need it myself, sorry, mate. Squizzy wants a loan. Jesus Christ, Squizzy got more money than all of us put together, I think, so... <laughs> he's got that much money. When he's walking around Dover, they're all going... He's nicknamed Ching Ching, because the coins are chinging in his pockets. About a couple of shots up at South Cape. Eh, nothing to write home about, mate, but for South Cape, it wasn't too bad. I think we had 115, so... Yeah, yeah. We weren't whinging about that, the numbers. We got 201 red ones this morning. 201 red ones? Them chook cages come good, did they? All right, mate. I'll catch up if you come down this way, old boy. Come down, get out of the wind. All right, mate, see ya. Bye, Roger. So I'm not sure how old Squiz has been going before then, but he sounds pretty happy now. He might have his natural good luck back again. Yeah, how'd you go this morning? Red ones? Yeah. No bullshit? No bullshit. You can never rely on Squizzy for telling you any numbers of what he's getting, ever, no matter what. Like, if your boat was sinking and all you had to do to fix that hole was find out what he got, you may as well put a bigger hole in your boat. You will never get an answer out of him. So your number, then I'll go with mine. One, two, three. 21. Eight, eight. <laughs> 201. Did you really? No shit. Mate, I'll tell you the truth. Mate, I don't know why I told Bryce the truth. I think I just had a weak moment. At the end of the day, experience pays the bills out here. And me having next to none, it's just how it works. How many fish are you guys on at the moment total? Can't tell you. Secret. Secret? Over a thousand or under a thousand? Over a thousand. Twelve hundred? Thirteen hundred? <laughs> I'll let you get guessing, mate. 1,252. <laughs> See you, mate. Cheers. The amount of coffee you're receiving is dwindling. See ya. <laughs> Just keep guessing. That's what he's worried about. He wants to beat me. The psychological warfare is real. The race is on between Squizzy and Bryce to fill their tanks, get back to the wharf and cash in. Squizzy said he got... 201 this morning, so he did he did well. Yeah, we only got 108, so yeah. I guess if 35 years wasn't doubling four years' experience, then you'd be a bit concerned. So what we need to do now is hopefully, magically, get another 500 in a very short period of time. Otherwise, a thousand is just sort of a sad number to go home with. Was well, there 200? Our 200. Yeah. Or you could put more bait in that pot to catch tomorrow. Yeah, it's not fit any more bait in. I should be able to throw uh, that, a pot that, on sand no, and we catch lots of lobsters. And no, if you don't, that's not how it works. Yeah, no. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm doing my job perfectly fine, thank you very much. It's all your fault. I reckon Squiz would be a better boss than you. Jump ship. Yeah, well, you offered me a job the other day. You should accept it. I will. I reckon it would do with those numbers, mate. You might actually earn money. I might as well start getting your gear on. Yeah, I like fishing Demons here. There's a lot of bottom here that I like. It's actually called Dead Man's Bay, but I actually thought I was going to be a dead man in here one night. We uh, was laying in here and it was breaking in front of us and just behind us and was just in the one spot where it never. And she was a long night, that one. Longest night I've had on a boat. I don't like calling it Dead Man's Bay because it just don't seem right to me. Come and set some pots, mate. There's plenty of your beautiful, lovely, lovely stuff here, you love. Hey? You keen or not? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Ryan's second lesson is about to begin. Oh. And 
this one has even higher stakes than the last. I'll just give Ryan complete control of the boat. Like, I'm sitting there behind him. He can go where he wants to go. I'll just keep an eye on him and, yeah, we'll see how he goes. Despite starting young, it'll be a long journey to a skipper's ticket for 16-year-old Ryan. You've got to do a lot of sea time to be able to do your skipper's ticket. So, really, you, you wouldn't be able to get your ticket to you probably about, about 23 or 24. That's probably when you've had enough sea time. Yep. I'm rating where he put the first one. I like it. Taught you well, haven't I, mate? Hey? Yeah. I just sit here and I'll just watch. I'm happy. Yep. Playing on the boat with the stresses and worry and trying to keep everything safe and going, and it takes its toll on you, like, it wears you out. Being able to share a small part of the mental load is not only great for Ryan's training, it's brilliant for Snotty as well. The isolation and the rigours of life at sea feel more manageable with his son on board. I love having him on the boat, like, he's a bloody good boy. Yep. Well. I'm just trying to find some nice thick cray weed to put them in for the morning. Hopefully get some crays or two. You know, love a bit of cray weed, don't we, Dad? Cray weed, mate. Cray weed. You want to give them a good amount of distance. You don't want to sit them on top of each other and confuse the crays, so just give them a nice bit of room. There's plenty of bottom up through here, so there's no point of smashing them in too close. Mate, that's exactly what I would have said. Yep. I'll keep an eye on him, make sure he don't get us tangled up here. Well, good that, like, guys out there, I can just sit here and watch. He spent plenty of time in this seat when he was no eye to a grasshopper watching me, so I think he knows what he's looking for. Yep. Don't mind that little spot there, do you? Yeah, buddy? no, I don't mind it. I don't mind it either. I wonder what Guy thinks about having to throw pots when you say yes. <laughs> when, there's, when there's a 16-year-old telling him what to do. Hey? 16-year-old telling him what to do. <laughs> I reckon he'd be like, I suppose I have to do it. He'll do what he's told. Yep. Doesn't worry me as long as they're in the water. Yep. Ryan's focused on pots, but there are dangers lurking beneath. Just here. Just here, that's a, that's a rock there, so we don't want to go... Yeah, I'll just run up through yeah, it. Yeah, you don't want to go up through there. Yep. Watching someone drive me boat, it's hard. And, like, I'm trying to let him do whatever he wants to do. But I'm like, no, mate, don't go over there any further. My mind is going 100 mile an hour, and I'm thinking, don't go any closer that way. No, 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 you have to turn. Go turn out. Get in, mate, and there's a reef here. It holds itself over. You've only just missed that, so... Go straight. Who's in the Yep. He don't know it like me. I've had that many shots there. Like, I know it like the back of my hand. Like, he's seen what he's seen on the plotter in the 3D, and he's going, oh, yeah, well, I can get close over here. But that's as close as you can get. You can't get any closer than that, otherwise you hit the rocks. This is his first, like, ever, like, full shot. So, yeah, it's good just sitting back watching, see where he goes and what he does. And he's got the boat under control. He's driving the boat beautiful, so... Bloody awesome job, mate. Look what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just kicking back. Love it. I don't know how I went yet, but I know I'm happy with them where they are. If it was me, I'd find it hard to sleep tonight if I'd done that when I was riding with the old man. He used to let me have some pots, and I'd be thinking about it all night. He'd be thinking, I hope I get some bloody craze. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what's in them in the morning, like, we love our cray weed, me and the boy, like, he, he gets a bit excited when he sees a cray weed on the sounder, like I've taught him, and he's like, yes, like, he's happy. He's thinking, you know, this is where the lobsters live, and hopefully we get a few. Look at this pot, baby. <laughs> Look at this pot, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah! Some of my best shots have been around the mole cave. I'm going to let Toby get that one. Yeah, a little bit heavier than usual. He's got something in him. 
certain times I go to uh, Neville's favourite areas, I get like this tingle, like your hairs in the back of your neck are standing up, like he's he's there somewhere. Woo! Oh, size ones. Oh, 14, I reckon. These are really nice fish, really nice. Nice and chunky. Some bigger ones in with them and smaller ones. Just a mixed bag. These will sell beautifully off the wharf. At the moment, they're just going to keep coming. All these fish are around a kilo or a bit over. So it looks really good. That's what the market wants. Jockey too. Winner! Look at that, guys. <laughs> Winner, chicken dinner. And we're having chicken tonight too. <laughs> Mate, this is shit hot fishing. Absolutely brilliant. Awesome to see. These pots have been in the water five hours. Five hours and they're like that. Well, talk about that pot. I hope Bryce isn't jealous of us what we're catching today. Another blank. It's uh, going to be our worst shot altogether, I think, today. So. Yeah, it's fucked. You know, I've been throwing a lot of pots at a lot of Dad's good spots, but it still doesn't necessarily mean that the angle you're on, the approach you're on is correct. There's more rats in that than the city of France at the moment, with all their rubbish on the street, mate. I don't know. Looks like I'm just pulling size after size after size, but really, it's undersize after undersize after <laughs> For a lobster fisherman, this is probably the best problem you'll have. You've got to put the fish you've caught legally down in the tank before you pull any more pots. That's a bloody good problem. We're going to end up well over 400 fish for the day. If the price is right, that's $20,000 a day. Squeezy's added 350 kilograms of lobsters to his tank today. It's the best day of his trip by far. Whoop! Shove that where it belongs, Brycey Wicey. Uh, we ended up with 92, so that was nearly good. Well, this close to being good today, Loggy. Why well, I say 93? 92. Ah. With a shot count less than half of Squizzies, Bryce is falling even further behind. His father's plotter tells him the lobsters live around here. He needs a huge shot. So he's going to take a big punt. We've got some serious weather coming. We've got five, six metres, 40, 50 knots coming. All the fleets leaving the west coast today that in this area have all driven past us. Yeah, so we might have to gamble a bit with some weather. I just feel like the real competition's between two people, Squizzy and myself. We're there to make money. There's only one way to do that. That's work even harder. I've been on this boat in some serious weather. I know what I can do. I feel like I'm an idiot staying. It's lobster time. 